Yo, what's going on, party people, man? Hope all is well. Hope that you guys are having a fantastic November. Um, it's been a minute, you know what I'm saying, since I've been over here. And these streets, I've been over in uh, Fragcom, Fragrance Community. So all of my people, if you're interested in fragrances, you know, smelling good, feeling good, living good, showing you how to finesse fragrance, you know what I'm saying, and all those things. Uh, you can follow me at Fat Boy Finesse. Nonetheless, that's not why I'm here. There's been a lot of conversation going on, and I've been watching. I've actually kind of been supporting from afar. I've posted about it on IG. I've posted about it on Facebook as it relates to Dodash, the YouTube sensation known as Dodash. And, um, and right now, there is a lot of content going on as far as the quote-unquote fall of Dodash. And a lot of times this is one, these are one of those types of conversations that, you know, sometimes you choose to kind of sit back, chill out, you know, because you know, you have some insight that'll be valuable to the community. And a lot of things that a lot of people say, see, people respond emotionally on the internet instead of with logic. So even what I'm getting ready to say, some people going to say, you don't know what you're talking about. Some people going to say it's hate. Some people going to believe me. Some people going to rock with me, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, it's kind of going to be one of those things like, eh, it is what it is. Um, apparently, well, this is what I would say for those of you who don't know what Dodash is. Dodash represent, she was not the first. Let's just get that. And that's, that's not me saying hate. That's me providing clarity because I know a lot of you are coming from Instagram. You're coming from TikTok. Number one, you're coming over here because you're finding out YouTube pays more money in their ad revenue sharing program. Um, but you're coming to YouTube and a lot of people are starting YouTube channels. And so you're seeing content from new faces, leaders of the new school. But there's been a trend going on since the pandemic the past several years where people don't want to see over edited content. People want to see what we consider to be authentic, real, just give me what you got for a pork chop type of content. Don't sell me on all this fancy editing, this, that, and the third. I myself have done a lot of product reviews on this channel, talked about several different things. And there's a certain level of quality that comes with that. Even me being on camera talking on this microphone right now might rub some people the wrong way. But those of you who know that know when I got started, I got started on this device right here and I still post a lot of content actually using my phone. But I've been blessed. God has blessed me to have a setup like this. So I use a setup. I use it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, one of the issues that I see is that people not just DoDash, but one of the trends that we've been seeing with a lot of YouTubers over the past couple of years who have quit, you know, who are quote unquote burned out. Um, a lot of you may be familiar with my, one of my more popular videos where I talked about quote unquote kind of the fall of Think Media or what's wrong with Think Media in relation to is YouTube broken? And my standpoint is it's not so much that YouTube is broken. It's not so much that Think Media was broken. It's not so much that DoDash is broken or this is the fall of DoDash, and I'm going to speak on that in a second, is that the expectations of people are changing. But here's the one thing you got to keep in mind. The change is a trend in itself. Because at one point when YouTube first started, it was just posting content. Hold on, I'll be right back. Now, does it get any more authentic than that? You know what I'm saying? So I was rendering a video uh, for my other channel, and uh, that just got done. You know, it automatically starts playing again. But um, what happened is that YouTube originally started out, you know what I'm saying, as just a channel where you post content. You know what I'm saying? And then we move into this trend where companies started realizing that influencers were going to be the new employee, you know, so why spend trillions of dollars on marketing and advertising when I can invest a tenth of that, you know what I'm saying, in a influencer? Because if you don't take anything I say tonight away from this conversation, take this. People don't buy products. People buy people. 
You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of people have bought the quote unquote product known as YouTube because you bought into a person named Dodash. Um, you bought into particular people that you, you know, strive to be like. You know what I'm saying? People wanted to be like Mr. Beast. People wanted to be like MKBHD. For myself, people wanted to be like Think Media, Peter McKinnon. All of these popular influencers people wanted to be like, and companies recognize that. So the economy started changing. We started living in the the creator's economy and we live in what we call a UGC world user generated content and these companies realize we can make the same amount of money or more money by putting our product in the hands of real people because when you go to Amazon what do you do you look at the reviews before you buy a product you go try to find a review from a person that looks like you talks like you if it's closed um, they'll they're built like you because you want to know is this product going to do the same thing for me and so that's the world we live in today and so people got tired of being sold to people got tired of the over editing people got tired of the dramatics all these different types of things but that's a trend because here's the thing it suck everything is a cycle there's nothing new under the sun so we will get back to a time in a couple of years where people have gotten tired of the free organic content and just showing up and people will go back to editing and then people will go back to the Mr. B style type of editing and then we'll be back here again. It's the same thing with music. It's the same thing with cars. It's the same thing with food. Everything is just a perpetual cycle or a remix, as it say. So that's just to kind of give you some background, catch you up. So let me hurry up because y'all know I can talk about this all night, all day. So what has happened is that Dodash all of a sudden started, quote unquote, going viral. And so basically she started, she, as far as my understanding, when I first saw her, she was eligible for monetization, but hadn't monetized her channel yet. So she says, because to me, if you've been doing this YouTube thing for a while, you kind of know what's going on. And so she was eligible for monetization and she decided to go ahead and monetize her channel. And she posted a video about monetizing her channel. And something happened, which happens to a lot of different people. And let me not say a lot, a lot of subjective. It happens to several different people where you get, quote unquote, listen to what I'm about to say. You get lucky or your timing is perfect. You actually talk about a topic at the right time. You talk about a topic at the right time that's trending and it takes off. Now, I'm, that alliteration is intentional. I'm doing it on purpose because I want you to catch what I'm saying. Because she started um, a couple of things she did that I didn't. What is going on? I told y'all, it does not get more authentic than that. I'm not editing any of that out. Um, and so there are a couple of things that happened that I kind of raised an eyebrow at, even at showing, you know, supporting from afar and sharing her videos with my community. Number one, you never put all your eggs in one basket. That's number one. So she was talking about she was going to quit. That's not smart. Because if you quit... This money depends on people. And if and when, listen to what I'm saying, if and when, not or, if and when, people turn or change on you. It's not the algorithm that changes on you. A lot of y'all are trying to figure out um, why are people not seeing my content. Can I, can I be honest with you? Because it's just not good. Your audience don't want to see it. That, that I, 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 don't, I don't, never mind, we'll get to that later. But if and when people change on you, your views are going to be different. Your views are going to be different. Your CPM or your RPM is going to be different. Some of y'all like, what's the CPM, RPM? When she's talking about how much money she's made from AdSense, basically what happens is there are certain advertisers that are in the Google, that are in partnership with Google, which is, you know, which is literally the ABC company is the parent company that owns Google, that owns YouTube. And so they're in partnership together. Really, they funneling money amongst themselves. It's kind of crazy. They're getting all kind of tax write-offs for that. And so what happens is, if you're part of the YouTube uh, partnership program, what happens is they say, okay, for every 1,000 views you get, we will give you so much money. Now, here's what people weren't talking about when it came to her. Dodash started posting videos 
four years ago. So she didn't just catch fire. She already had a base and she was getting some views in round t- around 2021, 2022. What was happening around this time? The pandemic. A lot of people had left their jobs. A lot of people were trying to figure out ways to make money without returning back to the office. What is one of the quickest and easiest ways to do that? Food delivery. Either you're doing food delivery or you were doing grocery pickup with Instacart or some of y'all started doing Amazon Flex. So guess what people were doing? They were on the Internet searching for content on, do- you know, do- I'm about to say do dashing, door dashing. Well, guess whose content is going to come to the forefront? Hers was. Now, here's where I'm conflicting. And I'm just talking. I'm not talking. I'm not downgrading. I'm not degrading. I know some of y'all get emotional. But I'm literally just talking, telling you the story, giving you background information. Here's what bewilders me. I said bewildering in a YouTube video. Here's what bewilders me. And I got to fix this chair. Y'all excuse me. Here's what bewilders me and bothers me a little bit. During that period in 2022 when she was making a run, I've done my homework, um, she said she was making money. She was averaging $1,300 to $1,500 a week. All right, now, y'all, I went to public school, so I'm not good at math. But that $1,500 a week, I know 15 times 12, you know, I know what that number looks like. So we're talking 60, you know what I'm saying, well, let me that that number ain't right. A week, not a month. So, see, I told you I went to public school. I'm not good at math. Fifteen hundred dollars a week times fifty-two weeks in a year. Let's just say you know we're gonna make some adjustments there. But she's averaging. If she averages, let's just say fifteen. She said thirteen to fifteen. That's seventy-eight thousand dollars a year. And then she had another video where she said she was averaging like eight to eleven hundred dollars per in tips per week. Now, correct me, either week or a month, either way, let's throw the tips out. So if you're averaging thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars a week and you're making somewhere between sixty and seventy eight thousand dollars before taxes. What happened? How do we get to this point where is this woe is me type of. You know, all my life I had to fight type of mentality where it's like, yo, I've had to work hard all of my life because a couple of years ago you was making all of that money. But again, that was when the world was slow. Now the world is back up to speed. So you can tell she kind of takes a break, comes back, starts posting content again. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, you know, it's like, you know, she. Something happened, something changed because she kind of took a break, stopped making content, and then she started to come back around 2023. And then it was really this year, I want to say around June, July, August, this year is when it took off. Now, I'm skipping around because I just saw a video where somebody, where people are commenting because I guess she's selling a quote unquote her strategy now for like $20. And then people is like, yeah, that's a scam because there's no strategy strategy to YouTube. Broke people say that. People that don't have any viewers, any subscribers, all you do is consume content and watch other people's stuff. And you ain't never got a check from Google. You ain't never got a check from any platform. Say the stupidest stuff and say there is no strategy to YouTube. All you got to do is stay consistent. Do you know I know people that's been staying consistent for five years and they might have 500 subscribers? So what does consistency get you if your content sucks? Please answer that for me. Because y'all want people to be soft and hold your hand and babysit and be like, yeah, you're one video away. Yeah, you got to stay consistent. Yeah, I'm going to support you. Yeah, I'm going to. No, you're not. Here's what bothered me with the trend. If you're over 40, get on YouTube. If you're over 50, get on YouTube. That's cool. But what are you going to talk about that's going to keep me coming back and watching? Because here's the thing, all of, a lot of you can attest to this and you've experienced this. The initial push, because this, this goes back to the days of IG, follow for follow. If you like me, I'll like you. If you follow me, I'll follow you. If you subscribe to my channel, I'll subscribe to your channel. But here's the thing, 
if your content sucks? Who do you think is going, if you make one video a week, if Friday is my video, if my one video to make for the week, if Friday night, we've been working all week, folks want to go out, folks want to chill. You think I'm going to come on YouTube when I could be doing a thousand other different things and watch you and your content sucks? Let's just keep that 100. So I, I just had to get that off my chest because everybody want to talk about everything. Be consistent. No, how about you make good content? How about you make something that people want to talk about? How about you make something that people are interested in? How about you make something that get people in the comments talking about more than y'all be encouraged? I got 20 subscribers today. Keep going. If if was a fifth, we all be drunk. Everybody is consistent. Everybody keeps going. But your content got to be good. This is not football, basketball, where you just watch for the love of the sport. No. If you want to watch people, you want to be entertained or you want to be educated or you want to be informed. You don't want to sit here and watch somebody mumbling, grumbling, trying to figure out what they're going on. You want to watch somebody who can speak to your either your success or your pain point or speak to your experience so that you can actually connect with them on a deeper level that keeps you watching. Man, I know exactly what he's talking about. I know it's sis. I'm with you. Man, I was there. I get it. Okay, I'm encouraged. I'm inspired because she kept going. But here's the problem. That's not going to be everybody's testimony or everybody's success. So, again, my number one problem is that people keep saying be consistent. That is the biggest bunch of crap I have ever heard in my life. And those of you that say you have a problem with being consistent, you have trouble with being consistent, you don't have a consistency problem because you get up and go to work every single day. You have a capacity problem. And capacity deals with your intent and what you care about and your priorities. Anything that's a priority in your life, you are consistent at. Like I said, you go to a job every day you don't hate. I got to go to a job. It's a priority. If you started looking at content like that, like I got to post this video today, you'd be more consistent. And you'd find ways to have the capacity because whether you're tired or not, you got to get up and be a mom. You got to get up and be a dad. You got to get up there and go to school and teach these bad kids that you can't stand and want to slap every single day. Because you've already told yourself, this is what I got to do. It's the same thing when it comes to content creation. For some people, it's not that deep. For other people, it is. You know what I'm saying? So she makes this strategy and y'all in the comments talking about some ain't no strategy to YouTube. Stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. YouTube, here's, here's her strategy. Here, like, you you want to know what DoDash's strategy is? I'm going to tell you what DoDash's strategy is. DoDash's strategy is that she started talking about a topic <laughs> at the right time. Y'all sign up for these seminars. Y'all buy these ebooks. You take these master classes. I have master classes. I have ebooks. But I try to talk about things that are realistic, that are tangible, that are attainable, that other people don't talk about. And one of the things I don't tell you is be consistent because, duh, that's like saying don't breathe. Of course, if you want to be successful, you got to be consistent. And being consistent looks different for everybody. Being consistent don't mean you got to post every day. If you can only post one time a week, be consistent. If you can only post every other week, be consistent. If you can only post one time a month, that better be the best video ever known to mankind. But post your one time a month. That's what being consistent is about. What do you have the capacity to do on a regular basis that brings you peace and helps you go to sleep at night and satisfies your audience seeing you? That's consistency. But that's, again, that, that, that's, duh. That's, that's, that's eating, sleeping, drinking, and breathing. Those, those are the basics. That shouldn't even be a, a, a strategy or recommendation. But the strategy is she has all of y'all talking about her. That's not going to happen for everybody. Every, if everybody could go viral, DoDash would be like nobody. Like, come on now. That's the strategy. Timeless, trending, tangible topics. I'm going to say it again. Timeless, trending. Because here's the thing. Wait, well, timeless means it lasts beyond the trend. But is the trend timeless? 
what what is a timeless trend? What is a trend that never gets old? Being a topic of conversation, being polarizing. Somebody got a video talking about being tripolar. And I'm I'm gonna be honest with you because my first problem was she quit her job. You never put all your eggs in one basket. Number two, now you're depending on the platform. It ain't even your platform. That's my second problem. Number three, y'all, I got a problem with people that get on camera and start crying. Or they have these reactions. And my and my and my question is, at what point did you have the wherewithal to stop crying and say, oh, let me hit record? I don't like stuff like that. I don't like because we don't you you're you're not that type of person where you have the camera rolling all day all day now you may say okay i get home from work i'm gonna come in the house i know i got some reaction videos to do there's some new videos i haven't seen yet or somebody is like you got to watch this video so you say hey before i actually go look at this reaction i'm gonna go ahead and turn on my camera and make sure the camera is already rolling but y'all we can tell we can see like the mo when you done hit the button to record so when you hit the button and you say, oh, oh my God, is this real? And let me, be, I'm not throwing shade. Because the first time it's like, you know what? I was, I was like, yo, that's what's up, man. I'm happy for her. The second time I was like, man, she killing the game. The third time I'm like, hmm, okay, here's the strategy. Psst. Let me not say sell. Present authenticity. I'm not saying she's faking. I'm just saying that people know when they're being sold to. And at some point, when you have the same reaction all the time, now I got to look at you with my third eye and be like, hmm. Because that's not normal. That's not, that's not a natural reaction. Like being excited, being happy. But that whole, you know, because to me, that's just a thumbnail joint. That's what sometimes we do that for the sake of thumbnail. <gasps> oh, my God. <gasps> ah! You get a car. You get a car. Is this happening? And you just go back and screenshot it. And that's the thumbnail. You put some text on it. But I'm like, every video? So I was like, hmm. But that's the strategy. And I know she was arguing with people talking about some, you know, I just do what God tells. Listen, I'm a huge faith believer. I believe in God. I, listen, we can have that conversation any day of the week. And I'm not going to challenge her and say that God didn't tell you to do what you're doing. But what I'm saying is, let's not don't 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 act like I was born at night. Don't I'm not stupid. I'm not slow. So, so when it comes to YouTube strategy, and I'm going to wrap this up, because these are some of the things I teach. These are some of the things that I consult on. Yeah, we know be consistent. We understand there is a strategy to titles. There is a strategy to tags. There is a strategy to thumbnails. You know how I know? Because all of those things affect your impressions. And all of those things affect your click-through rate. See, people that say there is no strategy to YouTube don't even know what I'm talking about. They be like, what's an impression? What is click-through rate? What is CPM? What is RPM? You just got to be consistent. Start your channel then. Start posting content. Show me that all you got to do is be consistent. Because here's the reality. It's not going to happen for everybody. And that's a dose of reality. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying don't set yourself up to be disappointed because you think you're going to be do-dash. Because on one hand, we teach that everybody has a number of videos that they have to shoot before their channel takes off, before the algorithm notices that your audience has caught on. But if you're not creating content for the audience that is assigned to your voice, that is my whole mission. Whether you're creative, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a, a motivational speaker, an author, a thought leader, a community leader, whether you're a pastor, preacher, a nonprofit, a CEO, whatever. 
my responsibility is to help you find the audience that has been assigned to your voice so you can build better brands, grow better businesses and create communities around the things that you're most passionate about. That's my elevator pitch. That's what I do. That's what I help people do. There is strategy involved in all of that. But the strategy that nobody talks about is the hard truth that people don't want to accept is that it's just not going to happen for everybody. And so when you start making content, you make content the best way possible. You go into it saying, I'm going to put my all in this. But what's your why? I'm making content because I love to make content. If you out here talking about some, I want to make content so I can get rich. Wait on it. Because, again, if if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. If consistency was the only strategy to YouTube, we'd all be successful. We'd all have a silver plaque. We'd all have a gold plaque. That that's the re, that's the thing that people don't want to talk about. You know what I'm saying? So so I, I can't say this is the downfall of Dodash. She's trending. If you type in Dodash, every video you see right now, including mine, that may pop up is about the downfall of Dodash. Hear what I'm saying when I say what I'm getting ready to say. Dodash is not special when it comes to this. This happens to all major creators. To whom much is given, much is required. And the higher you go, the more you're going to have to deal with. So some of y'all talking junk can't even handle 50,000 subs. I think she at 58 right now. That's why you only got one. That's why you got 20. That's why you got 100. That's why you've been doing this for five years and you still ain't got to 1,000 yet. It does not mean that you won't ever get there. It just means that you have not found the audience that has, that's been assigned to your voice. Or God has not made your audience that big. Or you don't create content that's compelling, controversial, educational, entertainment, edutainment. You don't create content that people want to watch. People don't want to see you sit here and vlog all day up and talk about nothing. Not most people. Not if you're trying to go viral. So we got to stop this pacified approach of being carried. No matter what's going on, you make it all right. We, we, this is YouTube, fam. This is content creation, yo. And I'm a, I give God honor and praise for everything because God is in everything. The reason I've been able to reach some of the levels of success, make the money that I have on the platform, off the platform, monetize every single thing I do is because God blessed me, favored me, and gave me the ability to do that. But I'm not stupid. It doesn't just require faith. It requires faith and fact. Fact is built around strategy. So don't let nobody tell you that there's not a strategy and all you got to do is be consistent. Go look at those people and look at their numbers. Do they even have a channel? Do they even post content? And then report back to me and be like, yeah, being consistent got me this. Everybody that's successful, what would they tell you? I was consistent. Duh, what else did you do? I posted at a certain time. The reason I post at 12 o'clock is because YouTube analytics tells me that most of my audience, I can't speak for YouTube's audience, but I've posted enough content to say, hey, your audience, most of your audience is on YouTube at 12 o'clock on Mondays. And then they'll say, so the best time for you to post on Monday is at this time. The best day for you to, the best time for you to post on Tuesday is this time. The best day, the best time for you to post on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is at this time. And then they'll say, overall, out of all of those days, if you only post one time a day, this is the day that's optimized for your channel that the most people are going to see your content. And even then, it's still not a guarantee. Because is, is my thumbnail compelling enough? I didn't say if it's edited enough. You know what I'm saying? You honestly could probably go buy a Stanley Cup, post a picture of it in the middle of it, and you're probably going to get some views because at the time that Stanley was hot. I can definitely just take a picture and post this video of a cologne bottle. You know what I'm saying? I do fragrance reviews. And the people that I'm trying to reach, they're going to see that. It just depends. You know what I'm saying? But there is a strategy. 
And somebody could be like, he talked about there's a strategy, but he didn't go. If you didn't pick up on what I was putting down after 30 minutes of me running my mouth, then you're not the audience that's assigned to my voice and I can't do nothing for you. So that's my two cents. I've been sitting back kind of just watching being like, yeah, I got to say something about this at some point. But uh, yeah, shout out. Hey, this is what I'm going to say. Whatever you do, love what you do. And understand when you put yourself out there for the world to see, you're going to deal with a whole lot of scrutiny. You're going to deal with a whole lot of hate. You're going to deal with a whole lot of negativity. I think there are better ways that she could have. I don't I, I can't speak to scams. I can't speak to all of this other stuff that she's doing. I think that she 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 did not set herself up for success, for sustained success. Let me say it like that, because I don't just want to go up the mountain and come down. I want to stay up there. You know what I'm saying? Because you can get back to the top, but in between mountains are valleys. And as quick as you go up, you can come, you can tumble down. You ain't never seen an avalanche go up. Good God to my see Some of y'all gonna catch that tomorrow. They come down hard. And the higher you go, the harder. <laughs> but yeah. So uh holla at your boy. Let me know. Let me know. Holla at me in the comments. Let me know. Um yeah. If you wanna know my thought process, some strategies to be the successful. I got a, I got the content. Check out the channel. I got a whole free. If you want a free, I got a free ebook. You know what I'm saying? It's called the Content Whistle. It's a quick start guide to mastering the art of content creation. <laughs> I'm not selling it. You know what I'm saying? But if you want it, holla at me in the comments and let me know. I'll get it to you. I'll get you the link. But until next time, catch you guys in the next video. Y'all stay easy out there in these YouTube streets because woo, these folks is gangsta smoking that dope. Gang banging. <laughs> Gang banging. I'm out of here.